so the AC season is over and now we have UC predictions. Now my alliance has actually gotten into UC this time, at the ninth seed here. I thought this was our first ever trip to UC, but apparently we got in on the first ever one that was released. And I looked back on our Discord and I did the announcement, I did the registering, and I just do not remember it at all. So I must have purged that from my mind well and truly. It must have gone terribly for that, but we got RIH in our first match, which we're happy with. It's a winnable matchup. We avoided a lot of unwinnable ones. Uh, so, so we're happy with that and we're happy with how we did across the season. Now, the bracket. So I think there's clearly a couple of favorites. I think there's BDR and MAD that are 1 and 2 interchangeably, 100%. So you have BDR who have won every match this season. They have beat MAD this season as well. Uh, and then there's MAD who obviously very good as we know but they've just increased the strength of their roster an absurd amount going into this so they've added the Belzebuth account which was X Rum Runner, uh, Diver and Chaos which was Sabo's ult so those are free max or near max accounts which if you stick on buildings that's going to be an absolute nightmare and then you have a bunch of other strong rally leads like Krista Seals and Henry BP I think Ace wasn't in there, uh, Ritanic uh, even going down the list, like there's uh, Mr. Shelby I saw joined from ETA. He's like 5 mil rally size, 7.5k combat rate or something. Very strong account. You can stick him in outposts, so just have him contributing to rallies all the time. That will really help. But I think those are 1 and 2. I see uh, with Mad losing to BDR earlier in the season. There is the mitigating factor here of Death Tool not being here. His account was, but him like invoice wasn't, and he is their shot caller and coordinator in Mad. So I think Mad feel like they struggled a bit because of that. I think a problem I haven't seen this discussed much, but just thinking it through logically. Uh, last season Mad's best racer was Sleem. And currently, GSW quit, and he is piloting GSW's account, or LA Lakers, and he's been slow marching on races, which I would assume has taken away a lot of their rushing ability, and BDR are incredibly fast. Now, I'm wondering if with these other max accounts in uh, MAD, if... Mad can slow march some of the others and have him back racing. I feel like that could help them just when I run it through in my head. I'm not sure how big a factor it actually is, but it makes sense to me that it is a pretty big factor. But there's a bunch of accounts here which are bigger than the GSW account. So if you can get him rushing, that could be quite useful, I think. But we'll go over those matchups a bit later, I guess. So in this first round we've got BDR RPG I think, this doesn't need much analysis, uh, it's going to be BDR, no one in RPG's bracket will be able to compete with BDR, we can't compete with BDR, I'm going to pick Reese second and in this second match I will literally tell my alliance to not use personal speed ups or like big army increases or anything, just because it's pointless, we can't win, there's, there's no point burning speeds for it. I feel like RPG should probably do the same as well, to be honest. Which isn't fun, but it's, it's just the reality of the game. Uh, speed ups are finite. So RPG do have some strong accounts. One thing I did notice is I think this on paper is their strongest account. Uh, it's Gold Glorious, like Jon Snow Lord. But when you actually look through uh, like their elimination points, it's called JJ Lin. I don't think he showed up in a single AC match this season, so I'm not entirely sure what the situation is there, but if he isn't showing up, they're a lot weaker than they'd seem on paper. And may maybe I'm just missing him and being stupid, but I'm pretty sure I'm not. Yeah, you'd expect an account like that to be like the top contributor every game probably, but I mean, they're getting much out of him, sadly for them. Uh, RRH, they've done well this season. 
they actually lost their first match this season, but they got to UC. There is some like mitigating circumstances there though. Like they got OGS in their sixth match, who actually merged into FDH and I guess kind of disbanded. So they just got a free win and got into UC through that. I just feel like against us, like it's the same as us against BDR. It's just a bit um, like out of their power range. Sadly, there's only so much coordination and skill can actually bridge the gap of accounts. I feel like they might actually have stronger banners than us, like at the very top end. I know TARDIS is really good. Uh, Baron is really good. Uh, River Song, this is TARDIS is all, I'm pretty sure. Like, they're all really good, but it's just the depth of roster, like... What are the 6th, 7th, 8th rallies on a location going to be like? Plus just the participants in terms of reinforcements and stuff like that and sustaining troops and healing throughout. Because we set quite a high standard of that in Reef, so we get over 90 every match. And we don't have any huge rally leaders, but we, we do have a lot of like solid accounts we can just send all together. It does pretty decently. We're also quite fast at rushing as well, so I'm definitely taking us there. Uh, Mad SPL, I've said what I've said about Mad. Their roster is ridiculous, and they play the event really well. So I think SPL is just in the same boat of it just being a bit too hard for them. Like you're losing by 50k to TBE, you're not going to be able to be Mad. I feel like. And then CTP against GGS, I think it's a pretty easy win for CTP. I think CTP have a bit of a an odd reputation right now, to be honest. Like, I see them spoken about, and I feel like they're really undervalued, to be honest. So obviously they lost Napoleon, and his account. They lost a few other strong players too, like the Only King. Uh, and Trig went back to FDH, for example. So they have lost quite a lot of strong rally leaders, and I don't think they can compete at the very, very top, obviously, but the idea that they have, like, weak accounts is very heavily exaggerated by the fact they keep playing, like, Mega Whale Alliances because their power's so high, so they just keep matching into them in events. But against alliances like Reese or GGS, uh, accounts like Asterix and Queen of Sin and Bad Moon and Quadesh, uh, they, they'll just batter us. So against C uh, GGS, I think mean, CTP fly through that, and I think CTP probably go quite far. I don't think they'll win it, but I think they will get decently far in the event itself. Uh, WTP Ash, it's another case of WTP are just too big for them. Ash have Barrack, but I mean WTP is a ridiculous roster, so this is obviously like WTP run, AFO, uh, a few alliances merged into this group. I think mean, there's probably some questions about coordination because of that, but you know they've, they've beat CTP who brought in 96 members quite handily. I think that's quite a good gauge of their power level. They're going to be very, very difficult to beat, especially with our CCCPC here just going crazy every single match. He loves it. He's just smashing that heal button all day. Oh my god, Betty! Out healing CCCPC, you're crazy. So I definitely think there's questions about their systems, their coordinations. So the group that came from Run, obviously that was mostly coordinated by Sadapter, who isn't here anymore. I'm sure they do have decent enough systems, but I do think they have Maybe some players that will be a bit difficult to communicate with, especially in a like a, a live event context and you're trying to time rallies and stuff. So that there, there might be some struggles there. Against Ash it won't be a problem whatsoever, obviously. Uh, but when you get to the later stages against like BDR and Mad who just have such a high standard of coordination, there might be some issues arising there when it's like swaps and stuff like that. I think we'll have to keep an eye on that. But definitely one of the, the favourites for the win. If if they play perfectly, they can beat everyone. Their accounts are insane. M3O OBV. 
Uh, I think M3O will take this. It might be a bit closer than people would expect though. Uh, m I don't think have been as impressive as some would expect judging off uh, last season. So obviously last UC they were really really good, they impressed a lot of people. But they haven't recruited whales for UC, like uh, FDH or MAD have done quite heavily. And last you see they were well ahead of the game with the, the rebel trains, they were doing it inside their alliance for quite a long time, so they just had so many excess speed ups to burn on healing, and they could just sustain rallies and reinforcements forever because of that. So with that being a bit of an advantage which have been, has been neutralized, plus uh, not recruiting whales like their roster is just the same as during the regular season, which ours is too. And not everyone can recruit max accounts and whatnot, but when rosters around you are getting way, way stronger and you're already losing to the likes of MAD, uh, that can be difficult. And, uh, honestly, we did better than I expected us to against them too. Uh, we, we were literally disbanding buildings like before they hit, we didn't try and hold anything. I think we maybe tried to hold like Castly or something like once. Um, but we did better than I thought we would. We almost got 50k against them. Maybe they uh, bought 50% and didn't rush properly with 75% because they knew they'd beat us. Which is probably what I would have called for if I were them. Because it's a free win against us because we can't compete with their banners. Uh, it might be maybe slightly indicative of you know, just not being quite at the, the very very top tier for this season specifically but we know how organized they are everyone speaks so highly of Benny's leadership and systems and stuff like that so I don't think we should underestimate them and OBV they bought the Napoleon account obviously down here they merged in uh, quite a few players from the likes of VRM and GCM I think Allerton was from VRM I'm not even going to try and pronounce this because I don't want to embarrass myself. They brought in this guy from GCM. They're, they're very strong rally leaders. Their roster's looking very good. Their attendance is very good too. I think they've been slightly screwed here getting m on the first match, to be honest. OBV are definitely like nearing the, the middle of the best alliances in here. But against m it's it's just a bit of a tall task. m are very, very good at the event and do have strong accounts. Enfrio's problem is like max accounts, which OBV don't necessarily have in abundance. Then FDH, MHL. FDH, I think, might be the story of this event. So I'm going to pick them here. I mean, just going over MHL quickly, uh, they've dropped a lot of power. They've lost like Darius and Leophoras. Uh, Shatterhand, I think, was their shot caller, and he's joined Mad. So I'm not really sure what to expect of them, and against FDH, I don't think they have a shot really. I don't think much really needs to be analysed there. The story here is FDH. So FDH, they've always played 1AM, and because of that they've never played anyone. You see it's just like 26 billion alliances, 27 billion, 23 billion. They did actually match BDR here in the second match of the season, because BDR deliberately sniped into them. And FDH actually did maybe better than expected there. Like over 50k against BDR is pretty decent, honestly. And since then, like BDR haven't expanded their roster too much, if like really at all. Whereas FDH has merged with OGS. So you can see here the jump in power, where it's like 74 billion and 82 participants. And then it's up over 10 billion power and up here like 13 billion and then they're consistently getting over 90 participants too. So they've brought in four active players and a bunch of really strong uh, rally leads from OGS. And as far as I understand it, that merge has also brought them uh, a new coordinator, which is something they, I think, haven't had to like the highest level to date, really. 
They've also brought uh, Trig back over from CTP. It's a very, very strong account. And I think FDH's roster itself is looking like maybe the strongest in the game. I think it's, it's up there with Mad, probably. Because you have Odin, Ortizio, and Freeze. And maybe this guy, I'm not entirely sure. He is full gold glorious and like full gold SS troop appearances. But I know for sure Odin, Ortizio, and Freeze are max or near max. And then you have like accounts like this coming over from uh, OGS. Not in the war gear, obviously, which makes it harder to see. But these are very good banners just for rallying locations at the very worst, but you can stick them in locations and defend on them too. So these accounts have really made their roster scary to be honest. When you have like 10 rallies from these guys coming in on you, uh, unless you have like a max account in there, you're, you're gonna lose the majority of them. So they're gonna be, if they get the timings right, which from what I hear they are doing consistently right now, uh, they're gonna go very far. I think they're seeding here free. It might be where I I favor them in like the entire standings. I think it, it's like BDR and Mad a toss up for one two, and then I mean there's a lot of faith being put in this because no one really knows and no one's seen it yet. Because since the OGS merge, they have only played Wii and. SLM. Like, I've never seen either of these two play events. So we got to see them do it under pressure. But that roster is terrifying. And if they get the coordination down, they get the rally timing down, they get swaps of their max accounts into like Castly and Ports, they're going to be so hard to beat. And for sure they'll, they'll go free MHL. And you've got HOH versus TBE. This is going to be by far the best match in the first round, I think. So we actually played HOH and ran them very, very close. There was only 7k in it. And the story of HOH this season is they had Savo's accounts in their alliance, basically. So they had Chaos and Poseidon, which is uh, the Lord Savo account in. And these are so, so hard to deal with. So in our match, uh, they won the race to our port, and then they swapped Chaos in. It's very hard to counter an enemy port swap because you can't like slow march it you have to reactively send on it and if they get the the reinforcements right you're not you're just not going to be able to get there in time and you're not winning solos against chaos with like two or three reinforcements and unless you're of equal strength and then what they did with the savo account is we won their port i think it was me that won it and he just kept sending like untimed rallies at it over and over and over again. And it was like 4 mil dead every single time. And we didn't have mother, so he just bled us of heals entirely and it was a nightmare. But I think their plan is to, to win the race to Castly and get him in on Castly. And if they do that, TB 100% can't knock him out no matter what they do. So I think a lot of this is going to come down to races. Because I, the alliances themselves are very, very close in both power and skill, I think. They're both a little above 70 billion. And HOH has actually had a bit of a, say, issue. Like, their attendance has been a bit lower than other alliances around them. Uh, but in this last match, they've merged some accounts in, and they went up 15 participants. That's going to be huge for them. The issue for them is they lost... Chaos to Mad, so they lost one of their max or near max accounts, which is a big, big blow to them. TB's roster is looking, as it always does, a lot of very thick accounts, no like, nothing near max, but just very solid PvPers, very solid rally leads that are like lower power than you'd expect, because they're all zero castles, like Drizzy and uh, Asimar and Lord Wreck and people like that. I honestly don't know who I favor in this match. I have absolutely no idea. I think so much of it will come down to swaps. Because if HH win the Castly race and swap Savo in, I don't think TB win. Because HOH definitely have the rally leaders to at least like take their own port back, probably. 
at the very least, and like their own outpost, and just hold them. And there's no way TB can knock Savo out of Castly. There's just no way. He's, he's too big. But despite that, my gut is edging ever so slightly TBE. They both play 1900, so I imagine this will be there, despite HOH being higher seeding. I'm gonna pick TBE, but this is like 50-50, 100%. This will be whoever plays better on the day, or just is a little bit faster, will win that match. Then you got BDR Reese in the second round, I've gone over this. Uh, we're gonna throw this match. If we get there, but we can't win, so there's no point us using speed ups. If you're betting on us, if the handicap is anything like lower than 60k, do not bet on us. If it's 60k, maybe we can bridge that just with like personal speed ups. But I won't tell anyone in my alliance to use personals at all this match, so just be careful with that if you're betting. I know there's been a lot of betting drama with not clearing handicaps and stuff in the past of UC, so I'm being very transparent about that. Uh, mad CTP. I went over this. With, I feel I feel like CTP is a bit undervalued, but uh, Mad are just so good. Their group accounts are too good. They play the event as well as anyone in terms of coordination, and I think we're going to see that BDR Mad rivalry very early on, right at the top of this, winner's bracket. WTP M3O, that could be a very fun one. Uh, WTP have seeding priority, so they'll get the time slot. It'll be interesting to see what they pick. I'd, I'd imagine they'd pick like 1am, 7am, 1300, and it'll be played at 1am if M3O pick 1900, 2200, and 1am. Which I guess is a bit of a even ground for both of them. It's neither of their preferences. I do feel like WTP have the edge there, but it, it could be a case like last UC where just the more coordinated alliance uh, potentially wins out. I think if, if WTP is beating uh, someone like CTP this handedly, I think they will just about edge M3O, but I do think that'll be quite a close match actually. At least closer than some will expect. I mean, maybe like the more casual people doing these predictions will just bank on M3O because of the power, obviously. But if you know what's going on, you know how strong some of these accounts are, like God of War Love and Mia and CP and the likes of them. It's just very, very difficult for an alliance like uh, m to knock out of buildings. FDH, TBE, I think FDH take that quite handedly. TBE are just a little bit too outpowered. It'll be the same if HOH win too against FDH. I really do expect FDH to surprise a lot of people this event, to be honest. I really, really do. RPG versus RIH. This might be quite competitive, actually. I honestly don't know much about either of them, but I will give it to RPG mostly because of participants more than anything. Like in the last match, they got in 30 more people. That is a huge gap to bridge in terms of just troop numbers for like reinforcements and stuff like that. Uh, SPL GGS, I think this might be another one of those which is uh, very very close. I mean this is quite like HOH versus TB where it will be who plays best on the day. I assume most people will pick GGS, but Historically, after playing both alliances and events before, because they're like in like the top mid tier with us, so we've matched both of them like quite a lot. Uh, SPL have impressed me more often in events. Like they really throw everything they have into healing and stuff like that, and I feel like they might be a little bit more coordinated as well. But they do have ten billion less power, and they don't have. Donabart. So if Donabart gets swapped into Castly, and I know they slow march Donabart to Castly as well, 
SPR are in an awful situation, there's no way they can knock him out. So again, it's like the HOH match. I think this is quite a, a trend with UC. Uh, it just so much comes down to rushing and swaps. Because if you, if you get that account in to Castly, you're looking great to win. If you mess the swap up and you lose it, you're, you're on the road to losing. I honestly want to pick SPL. My gut is telling me to do it, but I, I do think GGS are favorites, so I'm going to go with my head on that one and just edge GGS ahead. Ash OBV. This will probably be quite competitive too. I will go with OBV just because of like the merged accounts and the bought accounts they've brought in. I'm not sure they've matched each other this season. They haven't. I just feel like Ash have like Barrack and like maybe Vowels, but OBV just have a lot of like five mil rally size really strong people and then the tier above that you've got like Death Note and uh, the Napoleon account which I'm pretty sure Ash will not be able to knock either of them out of locations at all they're just a bit too big in terms of rally size and stats both and then accounts like Allerton and uh, you know, Uruk, Kara Jr there's a lot of them which is a very uh, a deep list of rally leaders to be honest. I think it will take them past Ash, but I think Ash might be a bit better at rushing, at least from like videos I've seen of this past season. So we'll have to see how that plays out. Ash, if they want to win that, need to get Barrack into Castly or they'll lose 100% in my opinion. If they manage that though, they can win. Uh, MHL is HOH, HOH win, MHL are just not in the best of spots, but that they got to UC, but that they sort of tank their their points on these first matches and then everyone left, but they just got some slightly easier matches um, until they got into the event itself. I don't think with all the people they've lost, they can quite manage to compete with with HOH, because HOH are so strong in terms of uh, coordination. Their rally timing against us was really, really impressive. You can tell, uh, well I won't reveal, because I, I do know their system for it. It's, it's what we do as well, I'm pretty sure. But you can tell, I think it's Grom that does it, does it very, very well, because their timing against us was very good. I think we had like six or seven rallies on a location and I sped troops in to zero seconds and literally every rally hit and we lost the location before my, my troops like registered because the, the timing was just so perfect. And then uh, round three, Reese versus RPG, I'm gonna favor us, I'm biased, but I do think we're the on paper favorites too. I, like I said earlier with, with this account, he hasn't shown up in any of the uh, matches this season for some reason, and he seems to be their on paper strongest account. So if you just look through his list, it's JJ Lin. His, his name just isn't there. I think that makes quite a big difference. Like I know they have strong accounts nonetheless, but they did lose some people like this throughout as well, who well, I know a strong player, so they do have quite a few good rally leaders right at the top, like Costas and uh, SKB here, but against us I think we, we just might be a bit too deep for them, in terms of like our uh, like 7th, 8th, ninth, 10th rally leaders. They really need to get their top top accounts onto to buildings and then hard reinforce them to, to beat us, I feel like. And CTP GGS, I think CTP win that quite handedly. They have stronger accounts, they're more coordinated. I don't think much needs to really be analyzed there. Uh, M3O OBV, we've seen this match earlier in the season. Uh, 
and M301 quite handedly. I, ha I don't know, but I'm assuming by that score that M301 disbanded at 80k because it's right after 80k. So M301 probably won this quite uh, easily. I mean, TBHOH again. Oh, God. I mean, I'm going to go TB again because of the same logic, but honestly, if whichever one of these uh, wins, I think the other will win in loser's bracket, and then they'll match again, and then again, either of them could beat the other. So, like, it very well could be like one alliance goes deeper in the first match into their heels, goes totally broke, goes to winner's bracket, gets smashed, and then comes down and they're just broke and they can't keep healing for this this second matchup and then the other one wins. So I really, really don't know. But I went TB in the first one, I'm going to go them again, but 100% 50-50 pick right there in my opinion. Uh, round 4, BDR mad. Okay, this is what this all comes down to, right? Which one of these wins? Because I think these are, are everyone's favourites. So I, I've gone over the, the specifics of... I think Mad's roster is better. They've added stronger accounts, but they're not used to the systems. Their coordination might not quite be there. Whereas BDR are all used to playing together. They have all the systems down to a T. I know they've been doing some crazy rebel farming stuff inside their alliance with very high requirements which will be farming speeds like mad so they can maybe uh, heal a bit longer I'm not entirely sure what mad are doing inside their own alliance I know they're doing like external rebel trains maybe a bit more often than other alliances so I'm not sure to enable that if their internal requirements are a bit lower because in Reese our internal requirements uh, at the point where they're so high, uh, especially with like Black Diamond motivation not being available, just no one can do external Rebel Trains. So for the people that are leaving MAD to do those, or that I've seen leaving to do those, they'll be benefiting, but maybe like the reinforcers right at the bottom of the Alliance won't be and can't sustain the healing forever. And then I've gone over the, the thing about rushing with uh, Sleen having to slow march GSW's account. I think you need him hard rushing for swaps to these stronger accounts. Because BDR are so quick, and if BDR stick like the Burgle account on Carsley or something, even though you have the rally leads to do it, it's, it's gonna be a nightmare getting him off. It's gonna be an absolute nightmare. So honestly, this is like the TV HOH one where this is genuinely 50-50 and I have no idea who to prefer. And I 100% feel like you could pick one and then they'll meet later and the other one will win, just depending on who has more speed ups. So I'm going to do something a bit wild here. I'm going to pick Mad in the first one, but my prediction is that BDR will out-sustain them in terms of speed ups and actually win in the final later, which is a bit of a spoiler, but that is what I think will happen. I mean, that's a very specific thing to predict, but I just, I can't see one alliance winning two in a row. I think that they're, they're so closely matched that that is just so hard to imagine. But yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. WTP versus FTH. This is a tough one. I think most people who like know the names of these players and have tracked their event performances in the past will probably pick WTP and I think that's probably the right bet but I'm really high on this OGS merge new coordinator idea. I think FDH have so much talent in their roster that is just begging to be used like a bit better. I'm actually going to give them the nod because the other thing of this match is I imagine at least WTP with like CP and Mia and accounts like that they will pick 1am, 7am, 1300 so even though they're the the highest seeds so they get time slot priority 
I'm pretty sure FDH will pick 1900, 2200, 1 a.m. And then they'll get 1 a.m. And 1 a.m. is where FDH always play. Whereas for WTP, that is their potentially least comfortable time slot of all those three options. So I think time slot, even though WTP are higher seed, uh, could be an FDH's favor there. I think that could be quite a telling dynamic, depending on how that goes. Uh, Re-CTP, like I said, even if we try, which I'm slightly undecided about right now, I don't think we should, because I feel like it would just be a waste of speedups. Uh, I don't think we can beat CTP, or at least we shouldn't, right? They just have... I don't even want to think about how many guaranteed rally wins they have on like our strongest banners. Reese don't have an account above 7,000 combat rate. Uh, CTP probably have like, God knows, like 10, 15, more, more 20? <laughs> A lot more than zero at the very least. So even if we play it perfectly and get our best banners into locations, I, I don't think we can compete with CTP sadly. We'll see if we'll try if we get there. I, I don't know yet. Uh, M3 TBE, I think us and TBE will both go out at the same point there, sadly. Or HOH if they get through. Could be either one. I still don't want to commit to either of those picks. Um, yeah, M3 just a bit too a bit too thick and a bit too coordinated. I think they, they edge TBE slightly in terms of account strength and depth of uh, I think they edge TB slightly in both account strength and coordination probably. M3 are very very coordinated. I don't think people realize how coordinated they are just because they don't have uh, the stats to like really flex it to be honest. But when you see little snippets from behind the scenes and hear how people talk about uh, what they do behind the scenes they are definitely one of the most coordinated alliances in the game. So I'll give them the edge there. Uh, BDR CTP, I think BDR uh, fly through there. BDR are just a bit too strong for most alliances, sadly. But I think that's about the right spot for CTP in terms of where they're going out. I think that quite accurately represents where they are just on the game generally in terms of an alliance compared to everyone else. And WTP M3O. This could be a very, very good match to watch. I will just about edge WTP. This will be a rematch of the round two one. I'll pick them for the same reasons. Uh, I mean, we know why I've predicted for the final. So Mad win that. BDR win this. BDR go there. And then I will pick BDR to win. Maybe controversially. <laughs> But I, I don't think BDR or MAD will go 2-0 and against the other. I think that's the key. I think this could go in either direction. Either BDR winning first, and then MAD winning later. I mean, obviously, one could win both in a row, but there's such tightly contested alliances. I mean, this would be a great story, a great watch. And yeah, I think those are my predictions. Keep in mind what I've, what I've said about Reese's uh, matches if you're betting. Probably won't try against CTP or BDR in these situations, probably. So just be aware of that if you're looking for us to cover handicaps. I mean, we may well cover handicaps just with free speed ups, but just be careful on it. And yeah, hopefully it'll be a, a fun season.